Hi, I'm Dr. Scholz. Let's talk about prostate cancer clinical trials. As you know, there are a lot of different clinical trials out there, and I've always had mixed feelings about clinical trials. The um, trials many times are set up to answer important research questions, but they're not always designed to help patients. And in particular, patients who have advanced prostate cancer, they don't have time to waste doing clinical trials unless it's going to advance their survival and their quality of life. So I've gone through a list of clinical trials and selected one for presentation that I think both answers an interesting clinical question, but also can help patients perhaps get a better outcome. In this particular clinical trial, we're talking about men that have a rising PSA after previous surgery. This is a very common situation, probably 40, 50,000 men a year experience a PSA relapse after surgery. And a rising PSA, of course, is the beginning of the cancer coming back. A rising PSA after surgery or radiation, the PCRI terms indigo, the indigo stage of prostate cancer. And these men generally do very well. Historically, they're treated with either radiation, sometimes observation if the PSA is rising very slowly, uh, doubling time over a year, or more commonly, they'll get some sort of hormonal therapy such as Lupron. The study is looking at adding more potent hormonal agents to Lupron to determine if you can get longer holidays, better cure rates, um, longer survival. And uh, the medicines that in particular that are being studied are apalutamide, which is also known as Erlita, and Zytiga, which is also known as abiraterone. So the question is, if you add either Erlita or Zytiga or both to Lupron, are you going to get a better long-term outcome? In the clinical trial, they have 500 patients that will be randomly allocated to one of three groups, either Lupron alone, Erlita alone, or Erlita plus Zytiga. And the treatment will continue for 12 months, and then stop, and then people will be watched. So it's a, I think, win-win situation for men with prostate cancer and rising PSA. They're not proposing to treat men that have very indolent relapses, i.e. PSA doubling times over nine months, uh, but men that have shorter doubling times, less than nine months, are very appropriate for this kind of a treatment. So how have men done historically just with Lupron? Well, they've done pretty well. Uh, the problem is that practically no one gets cured. I've treated literally thousands of men with Lupron in this situation, and I've only seen two that remained in remission after the Lupron was stopped. So, got Lupron for about a year, PSA went down to zero, and in these two individuals that I remember very distinctly, their PSA never rose. There is room for improvement in this group, and the unanswered question is, if we add something more potent, such as Erlita or Zytiga or both, will we get some men who remain in continuous remission after the treatment is stopped, which is akin to being cured? So Janssen Pharmaceuticals is really to be commended for studying this group. The FDA, unless you show a survival advantage, oftentimes will not approve new medications just on the basis of better outcomes. Uh, so it's a bit risky to do a study like this because men who have rising PSAs and go on Lupron or other agents tend to live a normal life expectancy. The Lupron alone will keep people alive for um, 10 to 15 years without much difficulty. The difference would be, of course, that if more potent agents can put people in a durable remission, they wouldn't be dependent on Lupron to stay alive for the rest of their lives.